Welcome to True Story Testers. How accurately did the Gran Turismo movie portray the true story it's based on? How did Jan Martinborough go from gamer to racer? Many viewers may have been surprised to find out that the Gran Turismo movie was actually based on a real story. But it's true. Jan Martinborough was a teenage video game player who became a race car driver. However, Gran Turismo plays fast and loose with the facts. So, today we're going to separate the fact from the fiction in the Gran Turismo movie. Every teenage boy has the fantasy of transforming their passion for gaming into a real job, and Jan Martinborough was lucky enough to turn that fantasy into reality. Indeed, with countless hours invested in perfecting his skills on the Gran Turismo video game, the 19-year-old British racing enthusiast was suddenly thrust into the spotlight when Sony came knocking on his door. However, the film exaggerates the tensions within the Martinborough household, presenting Jan as a rebellious son grappling with the weight of his father Steve's expectations. Although Steve's background as a football player definitely affected his relationship with his son, the film heightens their dynamic and even creates entirely fictional scenes like the police chase and the father's decision to punish his son by having him work at the railroad yard. In the movie, this happens just as Jan was about to play the qualifying race for GT Academy. This leads to Jan leaving early in order to take part in the competition. In contrast, the real-life account is far less dramatic. Indeed, it began with a simple discovery, an advertisement for an online competition while playing the game. Six weeks of dedication and perseverance later, Jan received an email from Sony, officially extending an invitation to the next round of the competition. However, the movie's portrayal of Martinborough as the trailblazing pioneer of GT Academy overlooks the program's established history, spanning three years before his participation. So. Does the movie truthfully portray Yan's humble beginnings? No. The decision to reframe the tragic incident that occurred at the 2015 Nürburgring as a pivotal moment in Yan's career has sparked controversy, with critics and audiences expressing concern over the perceived disrespect towards the victim and their family. The movie recreates the crash where Jan Martinborough's Nissan GT3 Nismo came off the track at approximately 125 miles per hour, crashing into the fencing over 100 feet away. Sadly, the accident resulted in the death of one spectator and injuries to numerous others. However, the film takes liberties with the sequence of events, deviating from Jan's real-life trajectory in the sport. While the movie portrays the crash as a reason for Jan to double down on his efforts and commit himself more seriously to racing, his remarkable third-place finish at the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 2013, two years prior to the crash, contradicts this story's arc. By rearranging the timeline, the movie seeks to construct a more satisfying storyline for Jan, although this comes at the expense of historical accuracy. While the film's portrayal of the crash may deviate from reality, Jan Martinborough maintains that its inclusion was necessary to accurately depict his life story. Despite the altered story structure, Jan's resilience and determination in the face of adversity remain a central theme, so it made sense to include this important event. So, did Jan Martinborough's crash in a race lead to a spectator's death? Yes. In the movie, Stranger Things actor David Harbour plays a character named Jack Salter, the former racer turned overseer of the GT Academy. While Jack Salter is not actually a real person, he does appear to be loosely based on Gavin Goh, a practitioner of sports hypnosis, yes, that's a thing apparently, who Jan Martinborough encountered during his time at the Academy. Reflecting on the profound impact of their interaction, Martinborough has acknowledged its transformative effect on his performance and mindset. Despite Salter's character being fictional, the actor has explained that it was important for them to maintain authenticity even when crafting fictional elements. He believes believes that fictional stories offer a powerful platform for exploring character development. While real-life stories may lack the tidy resolutions often found in fiction, Harbour finds value in the creative freedom afforded by fictional storytelling to delve into the depths of character arcs and themes. The character of Jack Salter is also a classic mentor archetype often found in coming-of-age movies. So the movie does a good job of mixing real people with storytelling tropes that might not be exactly what happened in real life but help make the story more compelling. Many of the side characters in the movie draw inspiration from real individuals with varying degrees of resemblance. 
the character of Jack Salter is one who deviates quite a bit from the real person he's based on. So, was Jack Salter a real person? No. What about another supporting character in the movie, Danny Moore? Indeed, Orlando Bloom's character is introduced as a Nissan marketing executive who presents the GT Academy concept to the board. They swiftly approve the idea, and recruitment appears to begin almost immediately. However, in reality, Darren Cox pitched the concept in 2006, and it took two years for it to come to fruition. When interviewed, Cox observed that the character depicted in the film is portrayed as much more corporate than I actually was, with a more polished and corporate demeanor. The scenes where it appears as though I am somewhat of a corporate figure, to put it bluntly, those scenes are fictional. In truth, I was the individual risking my career to bring this vision to life. The moments in the film where there's doubt about whether Jan should emerge victorious or not are purely fabricated. That was never part of my approach. While Cox has acknowledged the necessity for such embellishments in Hollywood storytelling, he also insists that the character in the movie deviated from his true character. Indeed, he explained that while the character of Danny in the film bears some resemblance to him, it lacks his rebellious and anti-establishment spirit, which was integral to the program's creation. Overall, Danny serves as an approximation of Cox, reflecting certain aspects of his role, but not capturing the full extent of his personality and approach. So, was Orlando Bloom's character based on a real person? Yes. Though pivotal to Gran Turismo's storyline, the portrayal of GT Academy in the film is full of inaccuracies, diverging significantly from the real program it's based on. One notable deviation is the film's suggestion that GT Academy was a novel concept, despite its established existence three years prior to the events depicted. Jan's triumph in 2011 was actually the fifth GT Academy victory, following in the footsteps of previous winners, Lucas Ordonez, Lars Schlammer, Jordan Tresson, and Brian Heitkotter. Contrary to the film's story, Jan's participation in the competition was intentional, not incidental. He was active on GT Planet forums and trained hard to achieve qualifying times. Also, the film glosses over crucial stages of the competition, such as the regional finals, which were replaced by a single online race. In reality, players across Europe competed in home-based gaming sessions, vying for top positions, with only the best advancing to regional playoffs. So, does Gran Turismo accurately portray GT Academy? No. It's after Jan wins GT Academy in the movie that one of the major changes to the story occurs. While the film portrays Jan's immediate transition to GT3 cars, starting at the Red Bull ring, the actual sequence of events differed significantly. In reality, Jan underwent rigorous training and participated in several UK domestic club races in order to accumulate the required amount of points for obtaining an international racing license for Dubai. Nevertheless, Jan's debut at the 2012 Dubai 24 Hours was still not in a GT3 car, but instead the so-called Gamer car, a GT4 spec Nissan 370Z shared with fellow GT Academy winners. Despite the different racing categories, their collective effort secured a podium finish, which was a notable achievement. Subsequently, Jan transitioned to GT3 racing with RJN Motorsport, achieving his maiden victory in the British GT Championship at Brands Hatch in 2012, which notably culminated in the closest finish in the circuit's history. His diverse racing career also encompassed stints in GP3 and the Toyota Racing Series in Japan, although these open-wheel ventures were not shown in the film. Approximately 18 months after his Dubai success, Jan made his debut at Le Mans alongside Lucas Ordonez and Michael Crum in an LMP2 car. And as we saw earlier, contrary to the film's story, Jan's motivation for competing at Le Mans wasn't a tragic accident earlier in the season. The Nürburgring crash actually occurred nearly two years after his inaugural Le Mans race. While the movie concludes with Jan's triumphant performance at Le Mans, his career trajectory extended beyond. Indeed, he ventured into Super Formula and Super GT racing, becoming one of the few non-Japanese drivers to compete across multiple seasons. Additionally, he returned to Le Mans 
piloting the Nissan GTR LM Nismo in the top LMP 1H category, alongside fellow GT Academy alumni. So, is the timeline of Jan's career in the movie correct? No. In conclusion, while the Gran Turismo movie is actually based on a true story and features a number of real incidents and moments in Jan Martinborough's life, the movie also makes massive changes. For the most part, these modifications serve to enhance the dramatic tension of the movie, as well as shaping the story into a more conventional story. That's all for this video examining the fact and fiction of Gran Turismo. What was the most enjoyable part for you? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more fascinating content exploring the difference between movies and reality.